Meeting to order and start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so start... We can get a motion to approve the agenda for today. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda with one change. Megan uh, notified Renee that she will not be here. She's out working in the field this morning. So uh, I'd make a motion to approve the agenda with the uh, deletion of uh, the item immediately previous or prior to public comment. Okay. I have a question. I'll second. When will that be released? We're in a motion. Okay, there's a motion and a second. Any discussion? When will that subject be revisited? Actually, this is not really something that needs to be addressed to the entire Board of Supervisors. This is kind of like a more of a management type situation. Um, we approve reports that Megan's required to file and that type of thing, but as far as day-to-day business or day-to-day -day questions. It's not something that the Board of Supervisors needs to address in a, in a public meeting. Um, I spoke with Megan briefly this morning and um, told her that we'd get together and we need to look at her budget. We need to, um, and that type of thing as far as making those kinds of decisions, but it's not, not something that is normally brought to the board. On a regular so board. It, it will be a public meeting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it'll be open to the public, but it's not something that we have to address here today and make any decisions on. And the information she provided to me, that's not my area of expertise. So we need to get a little more into discussion then. And that can just be a decision between her and, and us as her, um, kind of the manager of that department. So if it's going to be a public meeting, when will we know when it's going to be? Because I've been kind of looking at the numbers, and I'm, I'm kind of interested from an accounting basis. Yeah, I, get, I, I asked Megan if she would wait. We would prefer to have her out in the, out in the country working on days that she can. And if, they're, if it's supposed to rain this week, which I believe it is supposed to, then maybe come in on a rainy day and we can discuss it. Okay. So. When, how will we know when it's scheduled? 24 hour notice on an agenda. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so there was a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, the HVAC project update. Dustin. Well, we're getting closer and closer. Um, we've got, uh, I, they've got five wells to drill, and then they have, they're going to work on getting their uh, main lines in. Um, they're hoping to get that done today, but they're not sure if they're going to get there or not. Um, the rain kind of threw them off, and, and uh, <coughs> same with the out front, but they should be having that opened up by the end of the week, I think. Start using that again. So, um, depending on how the concrete, how how well that cures. So, hopefully by Friday, probably Monday, they might they should be able to start letting people back in. There, so, how familiar are you with that point of entry? Um, I'm familiar. We we had a person ask why the arches don't match. Yeah. Yes, they. And I think that's been resolved yes. because I've I was just going to see what. But he did, Sam actually sent me a text then with a copy of the, the plans, and he said it, that's, it's being built according to the right. specs yes. in the beginning. If, so, If they would have built it to line the arches up, they would have had about a five-foot uh, wide, and there's just not enough room to get. Um, in the future, if they have somebody in there with a scanner, to get that in there. So it had to be a certain certain width and it just wouldn't have worked out to match those up. The only the reason the arch is like that is to match the windows basically because most of the windows have arches above just to kind of mm -hmm. make that flow together. So yeah, that's kind of that because that's been been asked quite a few times. That's so. why I was yep. seeing yeah. your answer here. 
Because so. he you. was texting back and forth with me a couple of times and, and disagreeing with, he thought somebody had made a mistake and yep. whatever. Yep. But then he did later yesterday afternoon, he texted back and said, here's a copy of the specs and it's oh, being built. Be, so. Yep, yep. yep. Um, so. Any, any other questions? No, sounds good. Okay. Right. Thank, Thank you, you, Dustin. Thank you. Okay, approval of the minutes from May 8th, May 13th, and May 14th. Approve the, approve the minutes. <coughs> I'll second that. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Approval of claims for payment for May 15th. I'll make a motion to approve the claims for payment for May 15th, 2019 as presented. I will second. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Utility permits and secondary roads. There's one utility permit, and I got plenty of things I can tell you about. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'll move to approve permit 51519 as presented. I'll second that. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. So yesterday, uh, you were gone, Renee, but we opened the bids for some mm -hmm. rock hauling, and it wasn't a big surprise. Mark Marietta got the stuff over by Alden and Gierke got the stuff over by Gifford. So I still have not spoken with our FEMA one-on-one -on -one person yet, which is getting kind of frustrating here two months later to still not have a point of contact. So before we move forward with those bids, I'd like to talk to them, you know. We don't want to throw away a couple hundred thousand dollars if we can get it back. So I'm gonna hold on to that for a while. Uh, and then all our projects going on. Uh, they're currently about halfway done. They're, current, they're milling the top two inches on our asphalt job. And then they, they waste that, they take it, and they'll use it on some other project. So they're about halfway done with that so far. Um, they're north of town, they're beginning to put the new culvert in. And south of town, they're ripping that bridge out. So our office is very busy right now, but <laughs> it's good to get things rolling. Is there a time frame? For which part? The culverts. Months for that one. The one south of town was, should move pretty good. Okay. Gerke, Gerke kind of staged it so that while this other company's building the culvert on the north side, they could get the south one done, and then Gerke will move in and finish that dirt work. Okay. But yeah, okay. to actually pour that box, uh, probably a month or so. Nope, okay. sounds good. Donna? Um, question You said the bridge south of town. Is that the one by Gifford? No, it's on 260th Street. By United Suppliers. It's been closed. It's just west of United oh, Suppliers on the west Rumble. of the highway. Yep. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Anything else? Not really. Okay. Business as usual. All right. Okay, the resolution for agreement for assignment of certificates of purchase at tax sale. Michelle, do you want to explain? Um, well, it's, it's Stacy here. Yeah. 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 I'll, I'll let you. Uh, basically, there's been. And then I'll fill in. <laughs> <laughs> I contacted Michelle uh, a couple weeks ago. There's been a property behind mine that's been abandoned, so to speak. The property taxes haven't been paid on since 2002. So. Um, the neighborhood's been kind of just taking care of it, not looking to buy the taxes on it and then look, try to acquire the deed on it. We have been able to locate the owner, so this is my first part of trying to get that property bought. Okay. Basically, what he's asking for is the assignment of the Hardin County tax sale certificate that we've held since uh, June 16th of 2003. We have not had any taxes paid for, you know, lots of lots of years it's costing the county to pay out send out tax statements three or four times a year just come back undeliverable um, it's a business name <coughs> that we just can't we can't get a hold of okay. and they are not going to pay the taxes so okay. if we can assign this tax sale certificate mm -hmm. over for the amount that um, Stacy's requesting I feel that would be a win for us um, and the other taxing authorities so that we can get those taxes collected and a deed get issued, you know, when he goes through the process, he's contacted an attorney um, to get this taken care of and then we can get it into somebody's name that's going to take care of it and pay the taxes. 
Great. That would Great. Be good. Good. Thank you for taking the initiative, mm -hmm. and thanks for working with him, Michelle. Yeah. Right. If there's if there's anybody else that has properties like this, you know, we have lots and lots of Hardin County tax sales that people are just walking away from properties, and it would be great to um, be able to get those assigned to people. Right. Okay. All right. I'll make a motion to approve the resolution of the agreement for the assignment of certificates of purchase tax sale as presented. I'll second. Okay, any other discussion? All those, oh, sorry, Nancy. Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much. Change of status, emergency management. I'll make a motion to approve the change of status for Thomas Creighton, Emergency Management Coordinator, at a yearly salary of $50,000, effective May 25th, 2019. Um, this was an appointment by the Emergency Management Commission, and they're recommended higher. Second. Any discussion? All those in yes, favor? Yes. Do we know when he's going to actually move into the county? Um, I believe Dave McDaniel said he was given 180 days to, to find a, a residence in Hardin County. Is that from the from job the offer or from this? I wasn't at the meeting, I guess I don't, I don't know. So from the oh, I didn't see you, Dave, I'm sorry. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Um, the resolution creating and appointing a Hardin County EMS System Advisory Council. Um, did you want to get up and explain on this, please? Yeah. So uh, last night we discussed at the Hardin County. Yeah. EMS could you Council. could you come up to the oh, podium, yes, please? Yeah, thank you. I'm just going to forward our opinion yep. that we discussed with BJ last All right. Night. So last night, we discussed as the Hardin County EMS Council to support this in what it is, what our belief is, uh, excuse me, we do want to point out before we wholeheartedly support this, is according to the writing, you are creating a leadership council. We already have one in Hardin County. So we, our belief is that this is being created specifically for coming up with a recommendation to you gentlemen and lady on an amount of taxable monies to be brought in and then how to disperse that to the agencies. We believe that is the sole purpose of this council. That's why we're supporting it. And then once that is done, we do ask that it be terminated because we already have a leadership and guidance council in place. We don't need to duplicate that. But. As long as that, as long as this council is done and uh, does what it's meant to do, what we believe it's supposed to do, then we, uh, as a council, we wholeheartedly support that as EMS service directors. I thought this was going to be more something that was just appointed to do the research. Yes, that's it. It's, it's going to be a discussion of all parties involved to come forward with a recommendation on an amount to, on okay. a way to bring forth taxable dollars. So your commission already consists of these people? It does not consist of mayors or trustees, but it is service directors, Hardin County Sheriff's Department, Hardin County EMA coordinator, um, supervisors, Northeast Iowa has Matt, Hanson Family Hospital. Um, basically the only people that aren't on this council are the townships and the mayors. But um, we want those people involved in the discussion of their property taxes. Right. So they will be. Yes. They will be participating in that oh, discussion. Okay. Yes. Okay. Good. And it's just an advisory. And it's just an advisory comes forth with a, with a recommendation uh, to you three, and after that, um, and if they say we have a stalemate, then that'd be a problem. But mm -hmm. we, yeah, <laughs> we we, we uh, want them to come forth with a recommendation, and as of that point, after their job is done, we. 
uh, that's why we did put the sunset date in there. Okay. Is we just do not want to duplicate a second EMS advisory council for ongoing. Uh, well, right, that makes sense too. Yes. yes, I understand that. Okay. So. Okay. Any other questions from anybody? Just a quick question. So you're, I mean, you're trying, we have right now six EMS services in the county, I think. Is that correct? Uh, so there's two, two ALS, four BLS. Right, and then the first groups. responder so groups. Have, yeah, through right. three or four first right. responders groups. So you're just looking for a way to support those? Correct. Um, and as we spoke last night, we don't want to get into the weeds um, because we do have some people that will be on this advisory council that probably don't believe that uh, they can help with service standards or response times or those things. So we want to stick to finding out what the model looks like and the, the dollar amount associated with it. And what model would that be? I have no idea. That's what this council, this advisory council needs to figure out is um, Are you supporting the services that you have? Yeah, place? I would prefer to keep it. My personal opinion, I like what Wright County did. They, did Wright County, Wright County um, supplemented the Belmont Ambulance, the Eagle Grove Ambulance, and the Clarion Ambulance, three already established ambulances. Um, I'm not sure how they worked with their first responders, but then they also um, allocated funding for medical direction quality assurance people, so they are stipending a physician with $10,000 a year to bring them in to, you know, assure that there is a strong medical direction, director's presence. Um, and so some of those things that I think we have a hard time sometimes recruiting and retaining medical directors. Um, and then there's also the medical directors that are very involved but get next to no pay. So. Um, those things to make sure that there's good, clear, consistent yeah. direction from the top down. Um, I think the other important thing about the first responders being involved, you have entities um, like the Alden first responders explained to me, um, they can leave, go out, bandage, uh, get every, you know, stabilize the situation to the best of their scope of practice, but They've utilized supplies and fuel and human resources, but have no means of recuperating any of those costs. This would, hopefully, the advisory council would find a way to formulate some type of funding to cover those expenses <coughs> that are uh, incurred uh, so they can keep continuing that service, but also making sure that our ALS and BLS services that are providing the transportation can fiscally stay solvent as well. You don't know what that, what that funding would look like. So you had given me two no. different scenarios. Right. We've spoken at two different times. Yep. So and I would hope this. Struggle with. Right. I would hope the council would, you know, figure out a dollar amount that it's going to take to either keep the service like it is today or better the service and come back and say, this is the dollar amount and then we would determine what kind of a levy rate that would look like and see if it's feasible and, you know, and then put it out to the voters to determine um, if they would support that service. So uh, and those two different, one was a per capita basis and then the other one you had talked about a backfill for services that were not solvent, so. Right. That's what I mean. You, I mean you I'd let this council, yeah. I had really don't have a preference. We talked last night, I asked Corey, you know, looking at the ALS districts, how they're drawn, he said that the North, the Iowa Falls ALS response district was probably a little heavier in population. So that needs to be taken into consideration as well. So um, I don't know what the exact best practice is at this point, but I think it's worth good discussion and not going in with a preconceived notion that, you know, that we're gonna have to pick winners and losers. And the other thing, I mean, that you Supervisors could just um, um, raise fees for rural services to supplement the communities that are supplying services yeah. to their areas without a referendum. Like uh, I, to a certain extent, we, I believe. We have we have the authority to <coughs> give what we want through the rural services or the general fund to supplement either one. 
Is that what your question was? Yeah, I just, yeah. I'm just trying to No different than a library or anything else. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. yeah. I'm just, you know, pretty new to the EMS mm -hmm. game, so yeah. um, I'm just trying to educate myself. And, yep. And, like I said, you presented the two different. Right. Two, one we probably support more so than the other. Sure. Because um, uh, you know we've got a huge investment. In yeah. Yeah. Taxpayers of Iowa Falls have invested a sizable amount right. of money, and in providing not only coverage for the city of Iowa Falls but the surrounding areas formerly covered by AMR. Right. Yeah, I I agree. Uh, I just think that there needs to be some really good conversation about how that's going to be divided, you know, how we can get the first responder groups in those BLS ambulances to remain, you know, yeah. in the picture as well. Um, somebody bl last night brought up, you know, manage it like the townships manage the fire protection. And, you know, that's a good model, except some of the fire departments um, are, ha are struggling collecting money from the townships. Um, I think Mayor Dunn would agree that, you know, they've looked at, gone to the fire districts to try to get some funding to offset equipment that is primarily used outside of the city of Eldora and it, there's been some hurdles. And some pushback. Yeah. There's no pot of gold there. No. No. Nope. I know we, I spoke um, at some different summits and things like that. Um, you know, it has gained probably at least, you know, in, in the central Iowa area. A lot of people, you know, know that service was put together fairly quickly mm -hmm. in Falls. So I tell them what we have here and they are very envious. They would love to have, you know, the amount of EM EMS services already here and exists. Right. So, you know, the supervisors just really, in my opinion, need to help and, and keep that supported because there's, there are places where, you know, there's only one service and they're about to lose that. Yep. And, you know, you have all these communities who have these really good services in place and the first responders. So right. um, it's exciting that you're looking at supporting those. Yeah, I would definitely not want to be in Chickasaw County's shoes. I wouldn't want to be in the city of Independence's shoes right now. Um, we could probably list a host of communities that are on the verge of losing EMS and with no options and without the leadership that you guys shown in Iowa Falls to put something together. Well, there, I mean, you have two really good ALS services yeah. in the county, so. But for what you guys did in a short time, the city of Independence right now and Chickasaw County are really struggling to find, you know, that intestinal fortitude to get up and say, we've got to do something because this is, you know, an immediate need. So, um, but I think the advisory council can come up with some good ideas and, and determine, you know, at least one course of action. We did put in here that uh, by, uh, what was the date, Ben? September? Uh, September 1st. 1st, yes, to come right. back and report to the supervisors. If there's something that can be, you know, brought to us that, you know, there's a consensus on or some agreement, that would be great. If by September 1st, you need to come and say, hey, we need more time because we're going to do this th the right way, you know, um, I think that's reasonable as well. But this isn't something that we want to just, you know, throw spaghetti at the wall and hope it sticks as well. Um, but I don't want Iowa Falls or Ackley or uh, Hubbard to be in the shoes of independence or uh, Chickasaw <coughs> County any time in the near future. So I think this is, you know, probably not as proactive as it should have been maybe five, ten years ago, but it's proactive today. Looking at, you know, we're stable right now, but we need to do something to, pr you know, be proactive and preserve what we do have. Yeah, and I don't think those services are probably in near the shape that some of the other, because I've spoken with some of them on the phone. Mm -hmm. Most of the services are stable. Mm -hmm. um, they're supported by the communities. Um, you have very good coverage for the residents of the county right now. Yep. And that really doesn't mirror some of the other areas and some of the other agencies that have called just you know, wanting to know um, the process that was in place mm -hmm. for us to take over for AMR. <coughs> yep. Yeah. Well, 
will be interesting to see how this comes out and what the recommendation is. Um, I can almost see the downside too, but this happens in more areas than one where they'll come in with a recommendation for a levy. It's, it's something that we would levy countywide when, like you said, um, you've put a lot of money into it already, the city of Owl Falls. Um, I think each of the communities has put their own community dollars into it. So an additional levy will be kind of like double taxation for the same service. Um, townships have the authority to levy for fire and for ambulance. I know years ago, I know it was those monies were mostly contributed to fire and not the ambulance services. Um, but all of the levies are limited by, by the legislature. Um, so having townships, you know, limited by what they can give, um, I yeah, can see where a, a centralized levy would be good. Then everybody's paying the same, but. Zeldor is also, they have a substantial right. investment in their yes. service, so does the other mm -hmm. four communities. Ambulances right. are inexpensive, they're training. I mean, mm -hmm. every one of the communities have a substantial investment. I didn't mean to say that, you know, right. Bible Falls is any different from our peers no. in the group. Right. It's just that we've just had to do it really fast. Yeah. So, I'm curious to see what they come in with. Yeah. Be interesting to hear. Mm -hmm. And and again, it is an advisory. Uh, the last statement in here: the board board of supervisors will consider recommendations of the advisory council and reserves the right to adopt or otherwise take appropriate action or not on such recommendations. Mm -hmm. So, but I I am curious what people want to come in with and what ideas we can have. So I just hope everybody on the list participates including townships, cities, and, and so on. Okay. I'll um, make a motion to <coughs> approve the resolution creating and appointing a Hardin County EMS <coughs> System Advisory Council. I'll second. Any other discussion? All those in favor, say aye. Oh, Roll call. Oh, I'm sorry. DJ? Aye. Lance? Aye. Renee. Aye. Thank you for all the EMS providers and city uh, staff input and help with this. I appreciate it. Okay, the Hardin County Sheriff's Office, Teamsters 238, Master Contract. I'll move to approve the uh, Teamsters 238 Master Contract for the Hardin County Sheriff's Office as presented. I'll second that. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Recorder's monthly report. I'll make a motion to approve the monthly recorder's report as uh, Recorder Kadner presented to the board. I will second. Any other discussion? This is for the month of April. Okay, yep. all those in favor say aye. 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 Applications for use of courthouse grounds. We've got two of them here. I'll make a motion to approve uh, both applications. The first is utilization. Uh, they're by the same group, the Hardin County Bible Reading Marathon. Um, it's the Iowa 99 County Bible Reading Marathon group. Uh, to I make a motion to approve the use on July 1st and 2nd, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., and July 14th, 7.15 a.m. to 8 a.m. I will second. Any other discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. And public comments. Julie. Um, what about um, IRVM? Um, well, we discussed that earlier, um, and we removed that from the agenda. Actually, that's not really something that needs to be put on the board's agenda for a decision. Well, She's wanting to know about chemicals and the cost of chemicals. Which actually is, is a big deal. I don't know um, if you saw that on Monday or was it Friday. The $2 billion jury award concerning um, Monsanto and Roundup. So, 
yes, herbicide and cost and what she's using is important and should be discussed. She's not using um, Roundup, though. And people want to know um, what she's using and, you know, how much are we spending, are we, you know, what's liability? I just think it's important not to leave that out because, um, as you know, foreign markets and um, our, what we grow, the food we try to sell, um, the EU, you know, doesn't want to buy what we grow. Do the herbicides and what we use impact markets? I think it's an important thing to discuss. Okay. I Thank you. Just, I will just say myself, I am, that's not my area of expertise, and I would have to rely on what Megan tells me, and I'm sure if you want to have the discussion with her, she can explain to you what's in all of those chemicals. Thank you. So. You know, in the, in, here in a meeting publicly, so, mm -hmm. pe so people know what this she's dealing with. This was discussed at the beginning of the meeting, oh, if you'd have been here. But I wasn't. Okay. But my okay. thing is it uh, should we've be We've got the idea, Julie. Okay. Thank you. Openly, because of the issues that, from the past. It will Thank be, you. that's what they said. Any other business? I've got a question. Now that I had a bit couple days ago, rain and idea of sunshine, when they <laughs> add this extra gravel to the road, how does it rock? The rock, how does it like make a new bed? You know, they want to improve the bed so it's better for next year. With it being hard like that to put rock, how does that work down? Work down in there to make the bed stronger. Taylor. Because that's your area of expertise. It won't be hard all the time. I mean, the next time it rains, all of a sudden that will all mesh together. You know, that smaller material is mostly clay. Clay absorbs water. Yeah. So I understand when it's dry, you put the rock down, it's just going to sit on top, but it'll always rain again. That's the motor grader's job. Worst case scenario, they can always come bring their blade and they can dig a couple inches and you mix it all together and put it back down. There's ways to do it all. Well, I guess I was just wondering, is there, is there a plan to like improve it? Because they're saying they want to make it better. <coughs> I was just kind of wondering what it would you do to make it better. That was what the dream scenario to make it better would cost us more money than we're going to have in the next 20 years. So <laughs> we got to work with what we got, Bob. And that's kind of the situation we're in. I'd love to dig all the bases up and restart, but. What would be the pattern if you were to do start from scratch, tear it up and do it again. How would you lay a I feel like you'd you have to pick miles here and there and figure out the best method first. Some counties have experimented with it before because you got roads that have way too much clay in them and they've tried digging it up and you spray some stuff down and stabilize the base. So there's counties doing the research. The best method just hasn't been found yet. Okay. All, is all the rock that's put on the road bought from the same quarry from the same place? Uh, we have two quarries in the county that we're utilizing. That was Mark Marietta and uh, Gerkes. They were the two that got the bids earlier. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Any other public comments? <coughs> yes. Yeah. I was just going to share, if you haven't heard, this week is Hospital Week. So at Hanson Family Hospital, we're busy recognizing our patients our providers and our clinicians um, for the great work they do um, to serve our county and communities. Um, just a couple of the other key initiatives that we're continuing to work on is Dr. Gibson's arrival. He's expected to come in September. Um, and then the second thing that we're continuing to work on is our patient portal and how we're communicating with patients most effe effectively through that. So if you have any questions about <coughs> anything going on at the hospital, I think <coughs> we can get to those after the meeting. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Megan. Okay. Um, other business? I just might want to say something. Um, our tax sale is going to be the third Monday of June, the 17th. Um, if people don't want their taxes to go to tax sale, they need to have them paid um, by the Friday before um, so that they're, they're paid before we start our tax sale in the morning on Monday. Okay. Any other <coughs> business? All right. We'll ask for a motion for adjournment. Move to adjourn. Well, Thank second. You.
Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.